This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. Teeth. Why smash your head in your textbook when we are here to make dentistry easy for you? So before we proceed to the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And also, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and comment as it motivates us to create more videos of this kind. For more amazing content, don't forget to visit our website where we have MCQs, courses and much more. So let's begin. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are doing fine. Welcome to Dr. Teeth. Today we are going to learn about two important topics, pulpotomy and pulpectomy. So we have two terms, pulpotomy and pulpectomy. Okay, so to begin with, pulpotomy is removal of the coronal portion of the pulp. So here we remove the coronal portion of the bulb and in pulpectomy we remove or we intend to remove the entire bulb okay so we remove the coronal plus the radicular now here the problem is in the primary teeth pulpectomy that is the complete removal of the pulp is not really possible because because we have very complex canals okay also we have accessory canals also we have resorption in the root also there is difficulty in determining the apex anatomical apex that is why a more appropriate term for pulpectomy would be pulp canal treatment pulp canal treatment okay so till now we learn that pulpotomy is the removal of the coronal portion of the pulp and pulpectomy is the complete removal of the pulp. This is the pulp right in red. So this which is in the crown, this is the coronal and this is the radicular pulp. Okay. Now let us study about pulpotomy first. And then we'll move on to the pulpectomy. So what is the basic procedure we do in pulpotomy? We remove the coronal portion of the pulp. Okay. And then we place a suitable medicine here or dressing here. And then if the tooth is asymptomatic, then we will give it a final restoration and stainless steel crown so our objective here is to preserve this teeth we want to maintain this tooth in a physiological condition and also we want to preserve the vitality of the radicular pulp so this pulp will be vital still vital but here we will remove the coronal portion so pulpotomy it can be defined as the complete removal of the coronal portion of the dental pulp followed by placement of a suitable medicine or dressing that will promote healing and preserve the vitality of the tooth okay we can say that we are cutting a part of the pulp or we are dealing with amputation of the affected coronal portion of the pulp now what are the indications of pulpotomy what are the cases where we can safely do pulpotomy when there is mechanical exposure of the primary teeth a teeth where we have caries that is involving the coronal pulp but the radicular pulp should be free of any inflammation there should not be any abscess fistula the patient should be having a history of spontaneous pain also in the radiograph there should be no inter radicular bone loss one clinical sign is that when we remove the coronal portion of the pulp, there should be bright red bleeding from here and that could be controlled. If the bleeding is not, you know, controllable or the blood is not bright red, it is, it is dull red, then in that cases, we might need to go for pulpotomy. Now, what are the contraindications of pulpotomy? When the patient has regular toothache, when TOP is present 
Also, a root resorption is an important factor. Like when we have more than one third of a root length resorbed, you know, pulpotomy is contraindicated. But when we have two third of root length at least present, that is an indication for pulpotomy. Okay, so when you have two third or more than two third root present, you can go for pulpotomy. But when you have, you know, less than that, it is contraindicated for pulpotomy. Pulpotomy is also contraindicated in large cavity. Also, based on the clinical sign, when you have uncontrollable hemorrhage from the canal orifices, it is contraindicated. Some medical conditions like heart disease, immunocompromised patient are also not candidates for pulpotomy. Coming on to the classification of pulpotomy, we have two types. We have vital pulpotomy, vital and we have non-vital pulpotomy, okay? And in vital, we have three types. We have devitalization. We have preservation. And we have regeneration. In non-vital, we have just one that is called the mortal pulpotomy. And I'm just going to come on this term, mortal pulpotomy. Because you must be thinking that when it is non-vital, you know, when the therapy is non-vital, why aren't we doing pulpectomy here? Why are we, you know, doing something called mortal pulpotomy? So as we studied earlier that pulpectomy should be correctly termed as pulp canal treatment because of the complexity of the canal, right? So because of the same complexity of the canals and also there could be, you know, patient uncooperation that can make us choose non-vital pulpotomy over pulpectomy, okay? So when you have, you know, non-negotiable root canals, you have, you know, complex root canals, or the patient is not cooperative, then we can go for this thing instead of the pulpectomy. I hope the point is clear. Now, let us quickly jump on to the formacrisol pulpotomy. That is the single step. First of all, we will anesthetize the tooth and we will isolate it. Then we will remove all the KDs using a high speed straight fissure burr. Make sure at this stage you don't enter the pulp chamber. Then after we are done removing the caries, then we will remove the dentinal roof. Okay. You can use a slow speed here because we don't want to give trauma to the pulp. We want the pulp to face minimal trauma. That is why use a slow speed burr here. Now since we would have an exposure by this time, we would enlarge this exposed area and we will de-roof the pulp chamber. Then we will remove any overhanging or ledges with the same slow speed round burr. Then take a spoon excavator and scoop out the coronal portion of the pulp. Okay. Then use saline to clean the pulp chamber and then place a cotton pellet to stop the bleeding. So at this time, you can actually have the clinical sign whether, you know, pulpotomy is right here or not. If the blood is unstoppable, that is a contraindication for pulpotomy, right? So here, as we are going for pulpotomy, let us assume that the bleeding actually stopped. Then take a cotton pellet having formacrisol in it and place it here in the pulp chamber for 4 minutes. Above this pellet, place one more cotton pellet so that this formacrisol does not or has no chances of you know touching the surrounding tissues then we can remove the cotton pellets and check for fixation two indicators of fixation are the brownish discoloration of the pellet as well as the pulp stump then place ZOE cement here in the chamber and recall the patient after one week and if the patient is asymptomatic, we will restore it with a permanent restoration 
and then place a stainless steel crown. So this was the method for the formacrisol pulpotomy. We also have a modified formacrisol pulpotomy. We use the modified form in young permanent molars that needs to be retained for very short time only. So what we do here, all the procedure will be same except that we will keep the formacrisol pellet sealed here. Okay, keep the pellet here and seal it with ZOE. We also have two visit pulpotomy that is indicated as I told when in pulpotomy you have bleeding that is you know uncontrollable or you know that is sluggish bleeding and it is difficult to control. In that case we can go for two visit pulpotomy. Also if you have pus in the chamber or history of pain. There are other methods also like luteal dehyde pulpotomy, laser pulpotomy which we are not going to discuss in this video because I'm so lazy. We also have calcium hydroxide pulpotomy and that is usually done when we want to preserve the vitality of the radicular pulp and allow the normal closure of the root. So here also we will remove the coronal pulp and we will arrest the bleeding and then calcium hydroxide is applied to this area and then above it we place a temporary restorative material. Then recall the patient if the patient is asymptomatic then and also in the radiograph we have a secondary dentine bridge formation then the permanent restoration can be done. Now MTA can also be used successfully as a pulpotomy agent. Now let us move on to the pulpectomy. So as told before it is the total removal of the pulp tissue which in case of primary teeth is difficult to achieve. That is why we are using the term pulp canal treatment. So this is similar to the root canal treatment except the fact that here we use a resorbable material to obturate because in primary teeth we don't want our material to stay here when the root resorbs because eventually the teeth will fall off by root resorption. So we want the material also to resorb in accordance with the time of the root resorption isn't it? So that is the difference between them. Now indications of pulpectomy when we have uncontrolled pulpal bleeding, when we don't have permanent successors and we want to preserve the primary teeth in place, we can go for pulpectomy. There should be minimum root resorption and there should be no radiographic bone loss and there should be adequate periodontal and bone support. Contraindications obviously will include the medical problems like congenital ischemic heart diseases, leukemia. Contraindications are when there is no periodontal support or less periodontal support leading to mobility of the teeth and when the tooth structure is insufficient. Now the procedure is that first of all we will anesthetize the tooth, isolate it, we will prepare the SS cavity will remove the coronal pulp, will de-roof the pulp chamber and then all the pulp tissue will be removed. We will irrigate with saline, then a diagnostic radiograph is taken by you know inserting a diagnostic file, then we'll shape it, flushing out all the debris, dentine shavings etc and then dry the canal with paper point and then obturate it completely sealing the coronal and radicular pulp. Then we will place the final restoration and the SS crown. So this was the single visit pulpectomy. In cases where we have infection or you know there is pus or abscess, we go for multiple visit pulpectomy. So we usually have three appointments. The first appointment is all about SS opening. You know you anesthetize the teeth, cavity is prepared, pulp chamber is de-roofed and all the pulp tissue is removed using barb brooches and then Formacrisol cotton pellet is placed in the chamber and temporary restoration is done. Okay, then after a week, recall the patient, remove the temporary restoration, then we will file the canal and we will complete the biomechanical preparation. Determine the working length and we follow generous irrigation and debridement. Then place a sterile cotton pellet in the chamber and give temporary restoration. Then after one more week, that is the third appointment, which is the obturation time. Here, we will remove the temporary restoration, irrigate, dry the canal and start obturating. 
so here in observation what we do we coat the walls of the canal first with a watery mix of cement and then rest of the canal is filled with a thick mix till the entire canal is filled then we give the temporary restoration and lastly we call again after one week and if the patient is asymptomatic we will do the restoration and give the ss crown okay now i talked about resorbable obturating materials so what are these so commonly used materials are calcium hydroxide zinc oxide eugenol iodoform vitapex kri paste mta which is mineral trioxide aggregate so with this we come to the end of the video i hope you liked it if yes don't forget to give a thumbs up and also you can comment below and let me know the topics you want me to finish next we have premium orthodontics and periodontics videos on our website as of now so you can go and check that out i leave the link in the description box below so till we meet next time take very good care of yourself allah hafiz